Part four. All right, where was I? Yeah, I was talking about fundamental reform of Parliament. I was talking about my mad haircut and so forth. Um, right, why, why am I... If we need fundamental reform, why can't I trust the people that we've already elected into government? People like Tobias Elwood, my MP here in Bournemouth East, Gordon Brown, Alistair Darling, Ken Clark, Nick Clegg, David Cameron, the whole company of traitors that I allege and have towed the Queen and towed everyone on my mailing list, my Facebook friends, anyone that's read my stuff will know that we live in a house of traitors. The Parliament is a house of traitors. Uh, perhaps it would be good to explain why I consider I and others consider them a house of traitors. Um, Ted Heath, maybe, maybe I should go back even further. We had this nice little war called World War II, and it did, it obliterated all, all the. Well, Berlin was flattened, Dresden was flattened, London was flattened. The only people that weren't flattened were the Americans. I think some Japanese subs sent some kamikazes over there. And I even saw a documentary about sending balloons loaded with explosives, and all they did was kill a kid in Ohio or something. But anyway, World War Two basically was the war against fascism, against Hitler and Mussolini and the Japanese emperor and all those kinds of things. And we, the British people, joined in. We, we left Dunkirk and then built up our troops and had a nice little war for six years. Following World War Two, like we did in World War One, we, we the people decided that war was the thing of the past. That never again would we go to war. And lo and behold, 1952 we went to Korea and bombed the crap out of Korea. 1963 we went to Vietnam, blew the crap out of Vietnam, and so on. So for the last 65 years, was it, it's nearly 70 years now, we've had this declaration called the UN, 1947-1948, um, read the Universal Declaration of Human Rights, and we set up the, U the, the United Nations as a policeman of the world to stop things like war, to stop, to create a mechanism for global um, discussion, this global democracy, global, just to organise the globe, organise the world. Hasn't worked. That's the big picture. The United Nations is a lovely idea. Around 200 countries elect a, a head of state. The head of state goes to um, the UN and says that we'll work together to build a better future for us all. They're not doing that. What's, what I think has happened is that all of these heads of state, all of these prime ministers and presidents and dictators and, uh, have all ganged up. They've joined forces with the corporate world and they've created this global economy where you, you buy a calculator and shut in, in your local hobby shop. Here's a, here's, a good, here's a good thing. You buy one of these. Whatever that is. Um, and the Chinese paid penny a day, make it for you, and you import it into your local shop. And you buy one of these, whatever one of these is. Right. And the uh, corporates, in collusion with our traitors in Parliament and in the UN and in the US and China and all over the world, produce all of these things. Like this, this, this here is, I'm sure, is from China. So, uh, I don't say it's, it's come from Germany. But Anyway, and what's happened is that the corporates have towed the government 
we need cheap labour in China. China's got one and a half billion people, all paid really crap wages. And um, we can then build ships, put the calculators and this kind of stuff into metal containers, ship it halfway around the world and put it on sale in the shops. And um, the government says, OK, why? Well, if you don't, sir, we'll tell the Chinese not to bring anything into Britain. We'll tell them, don't make anything for Britain. We'll blackmail you. you we'll extort concessions out of you. We'll, we'll make a contract back to this thing about the legal person and the lawful person. We'll make a contract with you that says, if you don't do as we say, we'll cripple your economy. Oh, I'm not going to do that. I'm not going to cripple my economy. I'm not going to stop my people paying their lawful taxes and buying calculators. Oh, well, if you don't, we'll, we'll stop building your tanks. Well, you can't do that. Yes, we can. We've just signed this contract that says we will. And um, if you don't do as we say, we'll invade you. We'll blow you up. We'll remember Dresden. Hmm? That was American industry that destroyed Dresden. Remember Hiroshima. That was Oppenheimer and the 10,000 corporate slaves working to develop the atomic bomb. And they flattened Hiroshima. Was a quarter of a million people died in an instant. And Russell Crowe in beautiful mind says, I think that's progress. Right, so getting on to the plot, the UN got together with the corporates and said, OK, how do we, do, how do we fix this? How do we make this happen? And then 65, 70 years on, this is where we are at the moment. The corporates own our government. Rothschild and Rockefeller, uh, the evidence is out there, I've seen it. Between them, Rockefeller and Rothschild, um, own, apparently, $600 trillion USD. $600 trillion, that's equivalent to £100,000, give or take, 10-20%, per person that's alive on the world. So, uh, uh, perhaps next part, I'll work out the maths. But imagine, $600 trillion is all collected by the big global elite right at the top of the tree. So you look at the, the, the world as a pyramid, Rothschild and Rockefeller and that crowd, 2,000 people, I think someone's estimated, own $600 trillion. And the governments have signed it over to them. So, yeah, okay, you lend us some money and you build us some tanks and you can have all our money. Um, but there's six billion people on this planet. Um, like, like I said earlier, it's 61.4 million people in Great Britain alone. And we're all paying our unfair share, our taxes, our income tax, our VAT, our fuel duty, on the assumption that we, as a people, get some benefit from our government. But the government have deceived us. They've said, no, you, yes, that's right, you're paying your taxes. You, 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 you are helping Great Britain be great. But they're not. They're telling you portals. They're, they're nicking all your money whether it's income tax, VAT, fuel duty, 5% on tax on solar power, for example. Uh, and they're paying the Rothschilds and the Rockefellers the grand total of $600 trillion as a global corporation. So the whole world is paying the Rothschilds and the Rock Rockefellers, the global elites, $600 trillion every day, every year, every month for why? So I'm going to pause it now and we'll have part five in a minute.